G'day everyone, welcome to the Big Footy Eagles podcast for another week. We're back on this Friday, Honey Badger 35 here, I've got Miguel Sanchez as well. Quite possibly, Miguel, the strangest day being a football fan that I can remember. Team News Day, a fantastic day for the Eagles, except it wasn't 13 outs. We're playing North Melbourne later on. It's pretty much all we're going to talk about today because it was just a bizarre 12 hours in the life of Eagles fans. The rumours started and then they were confirmed and then they got worse. And all in all, Migs, I, I don't know what to make of this. It's farcical. No, it's um, yeah, it's completely nuts. And yeah, up until then, I think we were having a um, a pretty normal, quiet week. We only we had the Rioli um, tribunal on Tuesday, obviously, and we had you know, Jack Darling's triumphant return, which was you know probably yeah. fourteen days ago. You could have got massive money on Darling playing round two, uh, and now he's he's probably acting vice captain or something, is he? Um, yeah, and he's he's one of about eight actual AFL listed players that we've got in the squad. So um, <laughs> I mean, COVID has led to strange times, but yeah, this is just beyond belief, really. Not like this, not like this. No, yeah. and look, we've got some viewers jumping in already and jump in the comments, guys, have your say on things. We'll, uh, we really want to hear what people made of this because it's been a funny day on Big Footy, I'll say that. People took things in pretty good spirits. It was at the point where there was almost no point being upset by it anymore or... Vic Bias, blaming the AFL, getting shitty about it. It is just the funniest series of events that I can recall. We're going to see an amateur football team almost play against a professional football team on the weekend. Well. Well. With an ass, got, it's North um, Melbourne. We're, yeah, we're effectively fielding the Waffle side, well, sort of, who won the uh, the Waffle Wooden Spoon last year against the side that won the, uh, the AFL Wooden Spoon last year. And they're playing it at for some fucking reason, 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Delicious. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it's it's absolutely important that we play the game, though, so that Fox Footy has something to show at 10 o'clock on the Sunday morning. Um, no, no. So the much integrity... so that, yeah. Well, integrity can go out the window, you know, we're pulling players out of off-building sites and um, out of desk jobs and whatever else to, yeah, come on, oh. pull on an Eagles jersey and pull in. It. Um, I don't know whether we'll talk about it, but, it's great news for someone like you know, Aaron Black, who's, I think, 30 years old and been you know, toiling away in the waffle, won a Sandover, won, um, yep. won a premiership, captains West Perth. So it's a great story for him to be able to make his AFL debut, um, which he probably would have thought had passed him by. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a completely unrecognisable Eagles side, isn't it? No, nah, it's going to be a great day. Today was a great day for Eagles fans. I know it won't seem like that at first pass, but it was... It was Genuinely funny. Uh, like um, you said... Arnold Ricky, Schwarzenegger's entered the chat there, by the way. Oh, uh, here comes <laughs> more energy. <laughs> down, up, down, yeah. up. Right. I don't even know where to start. It was such a breathtaking thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up the outs on the on the uh, page here. So if you're listening along, apologies Surprise for that one. It doesn't I will cover read up our faces. Yeah, here we go. Out. Well, some people might wish it, do, um, wish it did. Out. Tom Barass. Dixon. Edwards. Gaff. Hoff. Jones, Kennedy, Langdon, Natanui, Redden, Rotham, Waterman, Winder. Did you get all that, mix? They're all out. That's we lost to the Suns. Well, that's it. That's the full list yeah. for now. We lost to the Suns. We lost 13 players. There are some good ins. Should we back in? Kelly, Ryan, Darling, you're pretty happy with that. Duggan, maybe he's underdone, maybe he's not. But at this point, I feel like we've talked almost, we're bordering on analysis, and I really don't want to do that today. <laughs> I'm normally about the stats and... This guy does this at centre ball ups and this is how where they rank in the league in kicks. I don't give a shit. We have a team of brickies playing against the North Melbourne Football Club who are there or thereabouts themselves. Honestly, I don't know what to expect. If the Eagles win, this is the best day in Eagles history. Yeah. You know, I, I personal insight, I left my job the day before the Eagles grand final in 2018. I did farewell drinks with my mates. It was awesome. Midnight, I got on a plane, ran about midnight, got on a plane, flew to Melbourne. 6 a.m., landed in Melbourne, had a quick nap at the hotel, straight to the MCG, saw Dom Sheed from the boundary. I didn't have a job. I didn't have plans. I didn't have a return ticket. I didn't know what I was doing. It was the greatest Eagles moment I could possibly have been in. And if we beat the North Melbourne Football Club on Sunday, Mix, I reckon it will be better. Yeah, um, almost worth flying over just for that. Uh, although if you fly over, you might end up being told to uh, pull on the boots and jump out on the field. Absolutely. 
<laughs> yeah, good point. Um, and also, yeah, someone else has commented about the clothes. I did specially put on a different um, Eagles jersey for this one. Guernsey. I've got new one. clothes. Yeah. yeah. Go on as the double blue. We've got the gold jumper on yourself there. I've got a grey shirt on. After Buddy's thousandth goal and a thousand sweaty hands on his head, the social distance mic for the interview afterwards was classic. That's yeah. a fair point. Hey, let's talk about the integrity of the footy, Migs. Let's just stop yeah. a game. I know it's legendary. I'm not. This is. I'm yeah. being a dick for the sake of it. But let's stop a game for half an hour with five minutes to go. Seen have they started yet? I got. We got uh, tired just, of waiting. I've just restarted now, and well, I've very strategically positioned my TV so that it looks like I'm looks on the screen like I'm looking at you while you're talking. While in fact I'm looking at the TV. <laughs> well, let me know if uh, Geelong closed that gap or if they gave up half an hour ago, forty minutes ago, that whenever that thousandth well. goal was kicked. Um, good on the bloke chanting, we all love leads as well. That was very good. Enjoyed that. Uh, I mean, Migs, let's talk about some of these debutants because we've got kids here. And this is sort of a thing that is actually a real story out of all of this. The season's going to be hilarious. We're, we're playing half a team. But some of these guys are going to be on our list for the future. Some of these guys, it's a good opportunity for. Callum Jamison, I've seen play three or four minutes of preseason footy in my life. He's our third or fourth choice ruck, depending on how you want to cut it. And now he's our starting fullback. You know, Jack Williams, has he even played Waffle? I was, I've was i been trying to read whether he's actually played Waffle or he's only played Waffle Colts. But he's our Good starting question. centre-half forward, Migs. So, yep. I mean, th- there is an opportunity for these guys, and I'm expecting it to get ugly. Let's not sugarcoat any of that, but we're going to go scattergun and just talk about whatever takes our fancy here. There is an opportunity for these guys to get a debut, get some runs on the board, as it were, if you're allowed to use a cricket analogy for a minute and sort of pick up the pace and, and find their feet at AFL level much earlier than we expected. Yeah, uh, and we sort of had a bit of a laugh last week when uh, those two guys were named uh, in the emergencies for the side, thinking, well, you know, they, they're there because they're the last two fit guys and yeah. you know, there's no way we're ever going to actually have to use them. And uh, lo and behold, next week they're making their debut. Um, Williams, no uh, senior waffle games yet. Jamison, I... Oh, Jamison would have played senior waffle for the Eagles, wouldn't he? Um, yeah, saw a little bit of him at the Beagles. Um, he's not ready for AFL. Jack Williams, I couldn't pick out of a lineup. Uh, I suppose the bonus is well, the, the the positive is there's going to be no expectation on these guys. Um, just go out, you know, enjoy the experience of their debut. Um, yeah, no expectations, and uh, yeah, try not to get killed because uh, they're both pretty skinny. I think that's uh, just. Good advice for all AFL games. Try your best not to get killed out there, guys. Yeah. Uh, what are that you expecting? That segues very nicely into the Rioli. No, okay. No. Yeah. We'll do Rioli later. What a week. Oh, my God. I'm so tired. That was yeah. three days ago, <laughs> that Rioli stuff. That was the most feverish 24 hours of footy. And then two or three days later, it's been absolutely slaughtered. Uh, what are you expecting to see, Migs? Because I, obviously, result-wise, I think most people are tipping north. Betting has been suspended because nobody knows what to expect out of the Eagles. I get all of that. I'm expecting Better us will... to win. I don't. I don't expect no. us to uh, to concede this game at all. I think that would be um, really weak, really weak mm. leadership from Simpson. Um, mm. Basically, we're, st- we're still putting 22 guys out there. Uh, it's mm. basically like for like. You know, Jamison comes in for Nat Nui. Um, Angus Dewar comes in for Barras. So yep. really, yep. Uh, I don't want to hear any excuses. I think um, no. we've got to go out with this game in the bag. Um, yeah, didn't yeah. even drop anybody. Lose to the Suns, they didn't even drop a single player. Yeah, pretty, pretty soft, weak, I thought. Yeah, soft coach, um, soft club. Yeah. What a joke. Um, <laughs> I, I think the one bonus in this is that we are playing North Melbourne. So if it was anyone else, we'd be getting thrashed by about twenty-five goals. Um, mm. North, I think we can probably keep it to double figures if we're lucky. Uh, we have got a few, a uh, few guys still out there. Um, Albeit the ins that are coming in, a lot of them are under a cloud. You know, Duggan's been named. Did you put up the ins yeah. before? I can't remember. Um, no, I didn't put up the ins. Uh, I did not put um, up the ins. Yeah, no, Duggan's coming in to play when you know, the plan was for him to play Waffle, so he's clearly not ready for AFL. Yeah. Um, Shuey's, you know, I don't, can't remember the last time he actually got through a game without getting injured. Um, you know, Darling's coming in off you know, training by himself. Um, running around the park in Sorrento or wherever it was. Um, so, yeah, we, while we've got some names coming in, there's um, 
they're a bit suspect and um, yeah, just don't know how the guys that are um, that have been plucked out of the waffle are going to go. You know, they're um, they're pretty. Um, well, I was going to say solid. They're more than solid waffle players. You know, Aaron Black's won the Sandover. Um, Stefan Giro's got um, Giro Gyro. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's got AFL experience, obviously. Um, uh, Brad Ainsworth, Ainsworth has uh, has Eagles experience. <laughs> um, who are the other guys we've got? Can't remember their names. <laughs> oh, that's not a good <laughs> sign. Uh, yeah, we've they were, done they're, the, they're the four that were named in the squad, weren't they? Yeah, um, and then you've got Mountford, Pearson, yeah. and Schumacher on the emergencies. Luke Edwards on the emergencies. Oh, even Declan he... Mountford. He, he seemed to be first cab off the rank, and uh, now he's still in the emergency, so I don't uh, know what's going on there. But yeah, you don't know how these training. guys are going to fit in, how they're going to... Um, well, Matt Nui being out means they're not going to have to worry about they're the... Uh, going to have no first the use. I think they're, yeah. They're just going to have to go see ball, get ball, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're doing buddy stuff in the chat. Yeah. We're doing Aaron Black stuff in the chat. It's a good time no to jump cr- in the no chat. No cricket talk. No cricket talk. No, this is good. You know, jump in, have your say, because this is weird and wonderful. If you're yeah. looking at the pod for the first time today, you're listening along, whatever it might be. This we is normally always have a structure. what it's like. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> we normally talk about what's going to happen, how the teams go, how they like to play. This is not happening this week. I don't know what's happening this week, but it's not its not anything usual. So why should this be any yeah. different? Yeah, uh, everything else is chaos. Why shouldn't we be? Exactly. Bailey Williams, good opportunity. I am terrified about what he's going to put out because I thought his game last week was decidedly average. Um, yeah. A lot of hope for um, him because he's a good athlete and he's coming into yeah. his own. But yeah, he's not a lead ruck. Really good yeah. ruck. Well, I, I wonder how he will go as a lead ruck because he hasn't had that opportunity before at AFL level. Um, True enough. The final round last season of the waffle against, um, I think it was against Peel, when basically he was the only, uh, he and Ainsworth, I think, were the only fit AFL list members who Connection. turned up for um, turned up for the Beagles because everyone else right. was in Brisbane. Yeah. Um, and he, he got about 50 hit outs. So uh, he might be, there you go. he might be able to step up as the, as the number one ruckman. He might be one of these guys that just thrives under the, the extra responsibility. And there's been a few guys around the league like that, like um, Mark Pitten at, at Carlton, I think, has come on in leaps and bounds since he's been given the number one role. Um, Riley O'Brien sort of shot up Tom Hickey. Adelaide, so. Tom Hickey. Tom Hickey's yeah. issue was always that he was a really Got solid first drug. Shot, Couldn't do the backup thing, and now Sydney is looking good. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, more cricket yeah, chat. I'm, I'm guessing you're not going to put up that comment from Matt. That one's not but going it, up. No the, cricket um, chat. It basically just about occurred simultaneously. Buddy's thousandth goal and um, the tenth wicket in the test. So, two um, equally important things that I care moment, about yeah. greatly. Uh, <laughs> if we win North Melbourne, also the, this we know Matt Ryan trade in uh, trade from Atlanta all happened at the same yourself. time. <laughs> Watch yourself. The if North Melbourne win, we're going to dissolve them. This we know. The Eagles should yeah. stop funding them. The AFL should yeah. say thanks, but no thanks. We'll see you later. Send them to Tassie. Send them to the moon. I don't care. Fold them and give their license to Tassie, whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Get rid of them. No good. I think everybody's expecting the Eagles to lose. Baseline, honestly, and this is now me trying to not be pessimistic for the sake of it or flippant for the sake of it. There is a large component of this team that is not AFL ready. Even the AFL listed guys are not AFL ready. Then you're talking yeah. Shuey, like you said, coming back. Yeah. Darling coming back. You know, there's guys here that. Kelly's been are not... crook. Yeah. Kelly's been crook. Petrescu Seaton showed great signs, but clearly doesn't have a full game of match minutes in his legs just yet. You know, we're already on to the nations of the world, which is not a criticism of him, because I love him. Keep kicking it long, son. Yeah. But, you know, it, it is a thin it list. wasn't at the club two a... weeks ago. Yeah. That's right. Like, it's a list that he's going to struggle. So if, uh, if the Eagles <laughs> lose by 10 goals, I'm going to be flat, obviously, because you don't want that. But that's kind of almost where I'm setting the expectation at the moment. Yeah. I think we, there is a sick under that. It's a, it's a moral victory. There is a sick part of me, Migs, and I wish it weren't North Melbourne because I hate North Melbourne. I wish it was a club I didn't really think about. Like if this was Adelaide, I'd be like, whatever, good luck to him. I don't care. There is a sick part of me that really wants to see this just go, and I mean go like historic. I don't know what the biggest loss is in AFL history. The Geelong Melbourne one a few years ago obviously sticks out as just a yeah. massive thumping. The AFL 
I'm not even bitter, and I'm usually the most bitter person going. I, anything I can pin on, pin on the Victorians, I will. But I don't. I, I think they've made this decision. The game's going to go on. I think it's a bit of a farce. Stop just ferrying top up players over, but whatever. So be it. I'll be annoyed when they change stance later, but there's there's more on that to come. Anyway, yeah. if this is the decision, this is the decision. But let's see what happens. Let's see what their stance is if the Eagles lose by 180 points. You know, let's see what happens if a record falls or something like that. And I think North Melbourne might be the saving grace in this because if we were playing Melbourne, 200's in danger, you know, against a midfield line. And I'm not trying to be negative for the sake of it, but there's a sick part of me that almost wants to see it happen. If we can't win, yeah. I don't want a routine loss. I want a biblical loss. Yeah, it'd be interesting how that would play out because I think at the moment the AFL set a precedent for themselves. Uh, for the rest of the season, saying, you know, this, we are not going to cancel games. We're not going to postpone games. You have to scrape together uh, every player that you can. Use every trading in your state. Man, yeah. Use the entire 20 man squad. What happens after that? I don't know. I, I suspect that would make us go outside the 20 man squad um, just to yeah. get the game away. Um, that's got to be the precedent for the year, and they can't go away can't go away from that when you know three big Melbourne clubs all end up in the same boat. Um, yeah. That when the end of the day clash is actually a clash between Williamstown and Coburg and or Coburg, whoever. Yeah. Um, they can't do that. And I would be worried if we did lose by 195 points that they would use okay. that as a precedent to say, well, this doesn't work. And, and that's why I want it to happen. <laughs> Anything to chip away at this league, I am signed yeah. up for because I'm bitter and I'm twisted and I'm jaded. Uh, shall we do five minutes of actual attempted analysis, given what we're going to see? Or shall we just move on to Willie Rioli? We can try if you like. Sam petresky Seaton, Tim Kelly, Liam Ryan. Uh, Willie Rioli somehow made it through this week unscathed, which is pretty impressive. So far. So far, I should say there's still several days for everybody to get COVID and become ineligible. We saw Rioli get midfield minutes. Petreski Seaton was great. Kelly was great in the preseason. Liam Ryan, I think, I mean, Nick Matt aside, Ryan's probably been our best player. Certainly, he's hit the highest peaks of players over the last couple of years. Yeah. Obviously, it's an easy comparison, an easy group to put them together, all the Indigenous boys, but I'm like, they're all going to have a run through the middle. They're all going to have to have yeah. a run on the ball at some point. Ryan's going to have to push right up the ground. There's something there. We might see something interesting. Petreski Seaton was really clean with the footy last week. You know, Nash likes to just send it as long as possible, which gives Liam Ryan a bit of a springboard. There's options. <laughs> Sorry, we're just coming to get. No, um, we're just getting we're just getting slammed. I can't believe yeah. I was able to name two clubs in the VFL. So you should yeah. just take that as a win. Get on with it. Two of the standalone clubs. We're going to have to. I don't think anyone's plucked any Tasmanian State League players yet. So we're probably going to have to do that. Pulling guys from Devonport and North Hobart and whatever. Oh, um, big up to North Hobart, by the way. We've got some great yeah. listeners out there, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Yeah, this is where Oka uh, comes back in and tells us that. Um, sorry to dox you there, but it's where Oka comes in and tells us that North Hobart actually mer- merged with Hobart and they don't exist anymore. Um, <laughs> sorry, what was the point? Oh, um, yeah, the Indigenous boys. <laughs> looking forward to looking forward to them combining. Um, it's a real shame that Jermaine Jones is uh, is one of the dozen casualties. Um, because I was really looking forward to seeing uh, Rioli, Ryan and Jones all running around together. Um, that would have been, especially Jones coming off the back of um, of just about his best game for the club last week. That would have been Absolutely, yeah. exciting. Um, but yeah, obviously those guys are going to have to um, do some heavy lifting in the midfield as well as their creative stuff. And yeah, we're going to need players like that to stand up and, uh, and give us some moments of magic to... Um, Maybe not keep us in the game because I think that's asking a bit much. But um, yeah, just give us some some highlights to go on while we uh, while we sit through this. All right, let's do some rapid fire questions because I don't have any detailed analysis left in me. I actually did some research for this, if you wouldn't believe that, earlier in the week, and none of it matters yeah. anymore. None of it matters at all, uh, <laughs> which is convenient, I know. But you'll have to believe me on that one. Right, Luke Shuey, Migs, does he get through the game without being subbed off and or? Missing next week through injury. Uh, <laughs> I think he only gets through the game without being subbed off if someone else has been subbed off before him. Um, Does he get through he... the game able to play next week, COVID aside? Uh, um, yeah, I think the odds aren't good on that. 
Okay, um, good. Just his, nice his history. When was the last time he actually got through a game? Um, uh, he injured himself in a training session this week. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not looking good for him. Oh, well, this will be a fun one. Uh, Jack Darling. How many goals on return for Jack Darling? Uh, ball's got to get down there first. Uh, yeah. Say he'll kick two. All right. From, nicely done. From very limited opportunities. I'm going to say he'll kick three, and I feel nothing about that. Uh, Aaron Black, possessions. How many possessions, Aaron Black? Did he make the final team? He did, didn't he? Um, he's named on he's the bit... bench, but you'd have to think he's going to get a run. O'Neill, Shuey, yeah. Kelly, Nash, Seaton, and then you'd throw Rioli in there as well. He'll, he'll have yeah. to get a run. He'll have to get a run through the middle. Um, yeah, he'll he'll be a ball magnet. Uh, I don't know about the quality of his possessions, and that's not a knock on him, but um, it's not intended to be a knock on him. It probably is. Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming that uh, if the amount of um, amount of possessions that he racks up at waffle level, if they were really good quality, I'm sure he would have been drafted by now. So um, that really did sound like a knock on him. I'm sorry, Aaron. You're really um, going in on this bloke. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I leave him alone. I'm just making assumptions about him based on the fact that um, he hasn't been drafted, which is really harsh. Um, yeah, plus twenty five possessions, I reckon, for Aaron Black. Wow. And they will be, they'll be much better quality than um, than I indicated, and I'll have to eat my words. I love that. Beautiful. Uh, Let's have a look. Who is going to score more, North's highest goal scorer or the Eagles' entire named forward line? Giro, (laughs) Williams, Rioli, Petch, Darling, Ryan. I reckon you could say North's highest goal scorer or the Eagles. Um, Do it. Whatever you like. Yeah, I reckon North... North's highest goal scorer, someone like um, Nick Larkey or someone will bob up and kick six or seven, and that'll be because we've got no back line. We haven't really talked about the back line, but we've named Callum Jamison at fullback. He's going to get murdered throw, if he, he, if he plays there. You will. He will get um, murdered. You throw McGovern's him out. Going and actually, actually have to play on someone. Yeah. Yeah, but Witherden's okay. Nelson's okay. Hearn's yeah, okay. But, McGovern's okay. In the scheme of it, where we're at, that's yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, we've, we've lost Barris. We've lost Harry Edwards. Um, mm-hmm. McGovern's going to have to play on someone. Um, I really hope we don't have to play Jamison back there. Nah, we're delving into the um, into the realms of uh, of actual analysis here. Um, right, well, let's pull up Angus. No, Angus Schumacher wasn't named. Um, uh, Angus Dewar is going to have to. Um, yeah, t- tugging the black fullback. Angus Dew is going to have to play big. I think he might get someone like Larky, and Larky's going to go off for six or seven, and we're going to struggle to kick five. Um, so, yeah, North will. Uh, Larky will outscore us. There you go. Good. Good. There you go. Well, we're all having fun. So, Migs, I'm not going to ask you about the result in terms of who's going to win or by how much, which we usually do. Uh, I am on the record that I want it to be as hysterical as possible. Funniest yeah. result, Eagles win. Second funniest result, North win by 200 points. Anyway, uh, who's going to be the Eagles' best player, Miguel? Uh, Rioli, I think, with the week he's had. Um, he's going to come out and uh, absolutely rip it up. Uh, he's going to give us some little highlights. He's going to try and take mark of the year. Um, he and Ryan will probably both try and take mark of the year at some point. Um, Brendan, why didn't we get Brendan Archie back? Why didn't we get Brendan Archie back? We brought Ainsworth back. Um Sorry, gone off on a tangent. Uh, yeah, Rioli's going to be our best. Um, but yeah, he's going to uh, get a run through the midfield. He's going to have 20 touches, kick a goal, take mark of the year, um, bump someone legally this time. Quite. Uh, Sorry, the last one was legally time. as well, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a marking Sorry, contest. He never bumped a man. Actually, he did... Uh, his illegal bump came a little bit after that when he um, took someone out after he kicked it, gave away the downfield downfield three that led to the Wits goal that probably broke our backs. But um, That led to me getting stared at by an old lady in the crowd because I might have screamed out some stuff to the umpire on that bump right in front of us. Anyway, uh, on the bump. we've got no. Moss, <laughs> Sorry, Moss here was, in the comments. That was just stupid by Rioli. Yeah, well, I was in a mood. You pay your money, yeah. you have a go, and then you get on the yeah. train and you forget about it. If we get completely pants by 100 plus and we lose even more players next week, do the AFL postpone the derby? Asks Moss. I say no. The show must go on. Yeah, and I, don't I think, think they can. More tradies, more landscapers, more yeah. brickies. If you we don't have a to pair worry about boots, putting people on play on planes and flying them over nah. to Melbourne for the game. 
No, nah, um, the, the, the Orbit, others. interestingly. If they yeah. get stuck there, that I think could be a discussion in terms of they can't re-enter yeah. the state. But beyond that... Well, then nah. we've got 12 guys that we're leaving behind in uh, in health and safety protocols that yeah. um, will presumably be out of those protocols by the time of the derby. There so there's half a team we've got there. There's your team already. Yeah. It's the best and, day for... Uh, you know, there's, yeah, there's nine other teams in the waffle and they've all got 40-plus players on their list. There's plenty of That's plenty it. of players to pick from so that we can make sure this game goes ahead. Right. Well, there you go. Let, the show must go on, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start, singing, um, I'm just, I'm gonna start singing, singing some Freddie Mercury, if you're not careful, if we keep talking about the show must go on. Right, let's move on then. Let's <laughs> talk about Willie Rioli. Uh, it was the mark, it was the bump, heard around the world, heard around the country. Waitley was crying, Robbo was crying, current players were breaking the players' code, they were having a sook. It was very few by way of media talking heads, Miguel, that actually said, yep, he was trying to mark the ball and a big hit happened, but he was trying to mark the ball. I will admit, I was surprised he got uh, offered a week, I suppose. I was surprised he got named. Once that happened, I was surprised he got off. But the argument from the Eagles was sound. He was trying to mark it. It was a very fair enough attempt, a reasonable attempt at the footy. It happened, basically, was their argument. Their argument was, you know, he was trying to make a play on the ball. He's allowed to make a play on the ball. I understand Rao got cleaned out, but that's what it was. And the tribunal agreed. So, I mean, the decision's one thing, but the saga afterwards, Migs, was just spectacular. Yeah, and you said that we didn't hear much from players sort of taking Willie's side. Um, and there were the odd, not the odd player, there was quite a few ex-players that came out and did that, but they just got um, lost in the, the overall cacophony of, of people calling for you know, Rioli to be uh, suspended for another two years. It was, um, yeah, you know, people like uh, Glenn Archer saying it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's a footballing act and um, even Grant Thomas, who you know, normally I wouldn't agree with just on principle, but um, he said it was, you know, it's a fair enough contest and, you know, Collisions are going to happen in footy. It's a you know, when the ball goes up for a mark. It's a it's a three hundred and sixty degree game. People can come from anywhere, and this is what happened in that circumstance. And uh, you know, Rioli and Raul are coming at it from opposite sides. Neither of them, um, both of them, were going for the ball initially. Uh, you know, they've got to make decisions in a split second. Rioli made the decision to go for it in a split second. Um, made the decision in the split second when he realised that Raul was coming the other way and was going to get to it first uh, to turn a brace rather than you know, either. He was pretty much already in the air at that point, so his options were very limited. Um, yeah, Stuart Dew said that's a, that's a good point. Even Stuart Dew said yeah, it's going to happen and he he's not going to be able to tell Matty Raul not to chase after everybody ball, so these no. things are going to happen to him. Um, yeah, look, I... Uh, the, the argument the AFL that the Eagles made at the AFL tribunal, um, I fully agreed with, and it was what I was saying um, all along. And I'm glad that they saw it that way, and the tribunal saw it that way. And I'm really struggling to see why so many other football identities, albeit a lot of them maybe don't have football experience, like Jared Waitley and um, Mark Robinson, and, and so on. I um, I don't see how they have seen it so massively differently to the way that uh the way that i've seen it and the way that glenn arch has seen it that and so uniform it was, it was a marking well. contest yeah and going on about and the afl themselves have come out and said they disagree with it mm. um I that's don't because they it. want I'm, to be seen to protect the head, and protecting the head not, yeah, yeah, not undermining concussions but if you believed what you were saying appeal yeah. appeal don't oh, have a bit each way i don't want to un undermine concussions either and we've seen what happened no. to Dan, Dan Venables but... was in a lap of honour pre-game because he had to retire. Yeah. <laughs> we know and what can happen. Yeah, and that was just that was a, an absolute garden variety marking contest. And the bloke yep. that he hit was it Tim Smith did absolutely nothing wrong and probably no. didn't even know Venables was there until he crunched into him. These things are just going to happen. Accident. Um, yeah, I mean the AFL's got a lot of work to do around its concussion policy and everything, but. Uh, unless you're saying that players can't leave the ground to take a mark and players can't, um, yeah, if you want to make it a non-contact sport, that's that's what you're going to have to do to rule out these things because otherwise it's a contact sport, it's a 360-degree game and these things are going to happen. 
bizarre, just a bizarre situation. The thing that got me the most, apart from how uniform the condemnation of the verdict was, which was hilarious because uh, we keep getting back to it. It was a football play. How everybody decided that this was the story of the week and the very soul of the game is at stake, but whatever. The thing that really got me was you've got guys like Matthew Lloyd and it wasn't him specifically because it happens every week. There was a good clip of him this week, but it happens every single week. Rory Lobb, two hours before the Eagles game, or, you know, two hours before the Willie Rioli incident, basically bails out on a mark. There's an Adelaide player coming with the flight of the ball. Three minutes, scores are tied or it's within a kick. Really, really close game. Uh, Paul jumping in the comments saying a lot of pearl clutching from Fox Sports. Absolutely. It was outrageous. Yeah. But then you've got the other side of it, which is Lloyd, he goes on TV, pulls up the clip and goes, Rory Lobb let his team down here because there was an Adelaide player extending for the ball, jumping in the air, Lobb's coming the other way. And he said, you would expect a senior player to make an effort on that, get his body involved, bring the ball to ground. Okay, fine. Yeah. Like, I understand that. That's the way the game's been played. It's a physical game. Big fucking tough game for men. You've got to take a hit and all of that. Yeah. I get it. That's fine. And then when Willie Rioli in defensive 50 doesn't bail out of the contest, he's on the cross. Yeah. Yep. He pulled the contest. Lloyd is bringing that up and saying, the Eagles lost this game to the Suns. Suns aren't great. Here's why they lost. And Willie Rioli, we know you've been out of the game for a few years, but that is weak. You can't pull out of a contest in defensive 50. And they know that's what they would have said because they yep. said it about Rory Lobb. And I don't like Rory Lobb. I think he's no. soft. But you can, yep. like this is, you know... He's not soft because he didn't shit mix somebody, and Willie Rioli's not a victim, or not a not some sort of you know pariah, because yeah. he played the ball and there was a big contest. Like, what do you want here? What perfect decision do you want from these guys in one thirteenth of a second or whatever we worked out that it was? Anyway, yeah. absolutely bizarre. I can't believe that that was this week, Migs. I'm exhausted. The game hasn't even yeah. played. <laughs> Buddy's kicked his thousand. All sorts of craps happened. Bloody uh, the dogs. Uh, yeah, of course, the cricket result, tremendous. Ash Barty retired. <laughs> oh, Christ. Luke Beveridge yeah. is on yeah. the hot seat because Carlton are apparently good at football. I don't know what's happening this week. I don't like it, but yeah. a part of me actually really sickly does. I, there's something about this that's really getting me going, just the concept of weirdness and leaning into it. Hasn't it. Been, Let's yeah. go. hasn't been boring. It has not been boring. I, reckon, I, don't, I don't think I've had this much fun for years. The the, the, the blessing of having a so good. So good. A little bit more cricket chat in the comments here. So, Migs, I reckon that's time for us. That's uh, <laughs> that's stumps, I reckon. Dinner We're not going to do, no, do heroes and villains because I could have done another 45 solid minutes on villains, I think. This is my problem. We've got way too much content. Thank God we're doing two shows a week. Imagine if we tried to yeah. squeeze everything into one hour this week. Outrageous. Uh, villains for me, the media hysteria. That's the slam dunk. Also, Fox yeah. Footy, send some commentators. Don't just call all the games from yeah. Melbourne remotely. That's weak. Migs, go nuts with your villains, and then I reckon we're done. Oh, damn. I was um, I was foxing. I didn't have uh, didn't actually have anything prepared. Um, ah. Yeah, take yeah, take your pick of uh, of any of the people that were jumping on the Rioli bandwagon. Um, yep. Yeah, take your pick on on the AFL for this ridiculous play on at all costs um, uh, uh, approach that they're taking, and uh, we know that they're not going to stick with. Um, even though they say they're going to stick with it. Um, take your pick of that. Um, Heroes, I was going to nominate Gary Lyon for Hero of the Week for actually um, pointing out how absolutely bloody ridiculous the situation is and pointing out that uh, if it was Carlton or Collingwood in in our shoes right now, that the game would be called off. Uh, he and said, also we would pointing be screaming. That, we're, we're accused yeah. of East Coast bias and we would be screaming. And Nick Rewalt went, yeah. yeah, we would, and then moved but, on. Yeah, move. but we're going to play it anyway. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, no, uh, this isn't, it's not a real team. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Villain of the Week nomination for Gary Lyon for saying the Eagles should have appealed to extend Rioli's ban. But anyway, there you go, it all balances oh, yeah, out. Good point. Yeah, so uh, I, uh, I withdraw my previous Hero of the Week nomination. I'm um, not giving Hero of the Week to Gary Lyon. Who can we give it to instead? Somebody, surely someone's done something good. Aaron Black. Good. Aaron Black. <laughs> Come on down, mate. Fantastic. Yeah. No, that is a good story. Making your debut, and he's, he's obviously oh, done a graft. Sorry, in the I had, yeah, yeah. Um, no, Hero of the Week, David Grace QC. Um, oh, of course. Jesus, yeah. how did we miss that? Off. 
DJQ say hero of the week, villain of the week. Yeah. Robo, I'm pretty sure he, he did that slash. after reading my Twitter feed and just taking all of my arguments and, and repeating them before the tribunal. Good day, David. Thanks for listening. Jump in the comments, share yeah. the show. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook at WCBF Pod. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Big Footy. David, say good day. We know you watch. Thanks for getting Willie off. Uh, and uh, yeah, I suppose go the Eagles in round two or what's left of them anyway. Migs, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun one. Uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah. What is? I don't even know what Elden Ring is. Um, oh, what's the other thing going on shame. apart from? Oh, buy followers. Uh, this looks interesting. Yeah. It's video. Oh, rate my nude pictures. Know. That looks interesting as well. Yeah, the comments are getting really spicy. All right, I reckon we're done here. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Yeah, um, <laughs> I reckon we'll wrap things yeah, up. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I've, I've got a plane to catch. I'm on, uh, I'm on the charter flight across to Melbourne. Just got the call up. All right, well, I'm on the yeah. private jet tomorrow, so I'll see you then. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. Jump in the comments, share the show, all that good stuff. We'll have a chat with you later and uh, unpack whatever the hell happens on Sunday. Best of luck, guys. See you later. Bye.